Here's the deal. Bash scripting is not actually that great of a programming language for you to learn. It's really bad, like doing simple math. It's, um, it's not terribly scalable. Uh, but here is the other thing about bash scripting. It is incredibly useful. It's probably one of the most useful things a system administrator or a Linux user could learn in order to make their day-to-day -day life easier because it allows you to uh, take a hundred, like, things that you might have to type out like hours and hours of typing and have a script do all of the logic and repetition so that you can just type a single command and then the bash script can handle all of the monotonous, repetitive, boring information. So bash scripting, while not a great programming language when it comes to building large applications, is incredibly useful on the command line. So I want to show you how to do it. There's not a whole lot to learn, actually. You can just start doing it right away because there's no like libraries to learn or anything like that. It's just a matter of putting a bunch of command line tools into a script and have those things automated. But I want to show you how to use them to the absolute uh, best of your ability, because if you design them correctly and use them correctly, they'll be even more useful than just having a bunch of scripts laying around in random places. Let's check it out. Okay, so here I actually have for us just a, a Linux install that I started. It's just called test and it's just a standard Linux box, but I want to show you how you can create a bash script. So we're going to do that. Uh, if we look, there's like literally nothing in here. So I'm just going to start uh, using a text editor. Now, just a quick aside, you can use whatever text editor you want. If you're on the command line, I actually recommend that you use something called nano. Uh, you just type it's going to be in almost every distribution. Just type nano and then the name of the file that you actually want to edit. And that'll give you a nice interface. Uh, uh, let's start one up here. Let's see. Nano um, script.sh. A lot of times bash scripts will end with the .sh so you know that it's an actual bash script. I'm going to show you a different way a little later. But they usually uh, start with this. If you see them on the internet uh, and you download them or you see somebody's code, it's probably going to have a .sh at the end. So we'll just say nano. It'll create this new file. And nano gives us this nice little interface where we can do like uh, the, the, oh, what is that little character there? The tilde. Nope, not tilde. The caret symbol. That's what it is. But this is like control X down here or control G, control O. All of those are nice little command line tools. So we could uh, say, you know, this is a file and then control X to exit. And then it says, do you want to save? You just say Y for yes. And then it asks you the file name you want to write. And I'm just going to select the default, which is the file that we open in the first place and hit enter. And now we've created that text file. I'm actually going to use a program called VI only because I've been using it for like 20 plus years. And that's just my muscle memory. But know that any text we edit, you can use whatever editor you want. And I recommend nano unless you have a reason to use something different. So let's edit the same command. And I'm going to get rid of this first line. So we have a blank file. Now the very first line of every bash script you write should be, doesn't have to be, but should be the pound symbol or hashtag if you're new and hip, <laughs> and then an exclamation point, and then forward slash bin bash. And now this construct, this little thing right up here at the top is called a shebang, which is just a really cool term, shebang. And that's what it is. But basically, uh, we start with what is normally a comment field. So if you're in a bash script and you use the, the pound symbol or the hashtag there, that's how you leave comments in a file. The only exception is the very first line. And if you do the pound symbol and then an exclamation point, the part after this tells the command interpreter what program, what kind of shell script this is. And it's important because we're going to be programming in Bash. However, a lot of systems will use something different. They're going to use something like a ZSH or SH or TCSH. There's a bunch of them, but all of the commands we're going to do uh, are designed for Bash. So if we tell it, hey, this is written in Bash, even if we're using a different shell, like in OS X, the default now is ZSH, uh, if if we're in that other shell and we start this this program, this shell script that we're writing, it's going to run it using whatever we tell it in that first line. So even if you're not using Bash on your uh, you know interactive terminal, this will make sure that the code is executed with Bash. So that's why the first line always needs to be pound exclamation forward slash bin forward slash Bash. All right, and then I'm going to save this because that'll actually do something else for us. If we open it right back up. 
The nice thing is, if you have that at the top, uh, most editors will realize what kind of file it is, and they'll be like, oh, let me give you really nice color coding uh, with your syntax, like syntax highlighting and stuff, so it looks nice. So that's another advantage to putting in a top line in. But that's important, okay? Now, from there, a bash script is, is nothing other than commands that you would normally run on the command line kind of strung together. So we could do something like um, ls. Right, And if we type ls, then every time we execute the script, it's going to ls our current directory. So, I mean, it's just that, right? It's just a command that we do on the command line. Usually when we're writing example scripts, we'll use echo. And this is my first script. See how it did that nice syntax highlighting? Uh, the it Just you can tell that you're doing the syntax correctly because it did the nice, nice color codes for us. But anyway, so this is a, a complete script. I'm going to save this and show you how it works. So press exit. Now, if you're not familiar with echo, echo just prints something to the screen. So we're just going to type on our command line, echo, this is an echo thing. And it just prints it out to the screen. Now our script should do the exact same thing. Okay. So we could type bash script.sh and it should do the exact same thing. Sure enough, it executed that one line that we put in there, and that's how uh, Bash scripts work. We can put a whole bunch of different things in there, and it will just do all the things that we put in there. Now let's go back in there real quick. So vi script, and there is another uh, thing I want to show you really quick, and that is you can run a command like this, and the output will just print to the screen, but you can also run a command inside of either backtick. So if we do like this and just do the date command in back ticks. What that's going to do, well, let's just, let's just see what happens here. Save this, we'll do bash. What it does is the output of whatever you put in back ticks actually becomes part of the script. So what we try to do is like, if we do type date, this is this is what comes out, right? It's that mark five, because it's currently that's the, the date that it is right now. But since we put it in back ticks, it actually tried to execute this command. And if we execute this command, let's actually, let's copy this, I'll show you here. I think I right click and then right click again. Yeah, so if we were to type that on the command line, uh, yeah, it's going to give us a whole bunch of errors, but we got an error up here because the command sat was not found because that's the first part of the line right there. So the output of it becomes part of the script. So if we wanted to actually get the date, we could either, let's go back in and edit it. This is going to make a lot more sense. It's going to be more useful later on, but I want you to understand what's going on here. So since the output of date is the actual date, that's not what we want to have as part of our script. We could do this though. We could say echo date and then it should echo the results of that right because it would be just like we were replacing the stuff in the back ticks with uh what we would normally put in an echo command so if we do this it should actually uh, give us that date command output and the other way you're probably thinking well why would we echo and put it in back ticks couldn't we just do date and yes we could these this should have the same exact output two times so let's see bash script.sh and sure enough so here we have this is my first script it printed out and then uh saturday it looks like the formatting was slightly different uh but that's okay uh, it printed out the exact same information twice the first time uh the output was put into an echo command right the output of that stuff that we put in the back ticks was part of the echo command and the second time we just ran the date command and let the output do its its thing okay hopefully that makes sense back ticks actually just you replace whatever's the back tick in the script and there's one more way i guess i can show you we should be we should be thorough right so when you have something in back ticks you're just replacing this whole thing with whatever the output of that command is or whatever you have in there is that you could also do echo dollar sign and then in parentheses put date so this is actually the exact same thing. So putting something in back ticks or putting something like this, it actually executes it. And then the output is replaced in this part of the script. So we should now have the date shown three times. The first time here, the second time by just outputting it to the terminal. And then this other time we're going to echo the results of, of this. So we should have the date three times. Let's save this.
And sure enough, the date is there three different times. And that's what we've done. That's a the very simple, simple, simple bash script. Okay. Now you've probably noticed that I've had to type bash and then the name of the script every time. And you're probably thinking, okay, if we're starting it with the bash command, why did we have to have that shebang in there with the bin bash? Well, you don't have to, if you do it that way, because we're obviously starting it with bash, but Linux is really powerful and we can actually make the script itself executable. So if we do chmod plus x script.sh, now all we have to do is execute it and it will run just like we started it with bash and it knows what to actually run it with because of that shebang. And so that's why we put that shebang in there because we want it to know when it's just an executable, what it should be running as. And here is the last like cool, super cool, awesome part. If we do this, if we say sudo move script.sh to user local bin, let's call it my script. We're not going to put that sh on the end because it's going to function just like any other application on our system. So if we do that, I have to put in my password. Now, anywhere we are in the system, like, see, there's nothing in here anymore. LS, I moved it out of there. But all we have to do now is type my script and it will execute just like any other program on our system. Now, if this seemed really, really simple to you, uh, that's okay. I just wanted to give everybody a foundation of how bash scripts actually work, what they're doing. They're just giving us access to run commands from our command line inside of a script. The only tricky part is when you put something either in the back ticks or if you put it like in dollar sign and then inside parentheses, that will replace the results of everything inside there. Uh, the output is just going to be part of the script. And so you have to make sure that you're thinking through, okay, Am I going to run the command Saturday, March 5th? No, that doesn't make sense, right? We're running Echo and we want that to happen. So just kind of figure out, okay, when I'm replacing it, it's not going to then execute the results. It's going to just plop it there on the screen. So anyway, hopefully, hopefully it made sense when we actually put it in the command line. And uh, this is the first uh, video in our series on bash scripting. We're going to get much, much more complicated because there's so much more you can do. Uh, and in the meantime, learn everything. Do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I hope you stick around because we're going to learn so much about Bash, and you're just going to fall in love because it is the coolest thing ever. See you next time.